Hey, Joe Gilder here from Home Studio Corner. I want to talk today about how to record acoustic guitar with just one microphone. I love acoustic guitar. It's probably the single instrument, aside from my voice, that I have recorded the most which means I've done a lot of the stupid mistakes there are out there to do. And today I wanna to share with you a really simple but effective approach to recording an acoustic guitar with a single microphone. Now, the first thing I gotta say, and just, just forgive me, cause I just, I gotta say it. If I don't say it, I'll kick myself. You gotta start, before you talk about microphone, before you talk about placement, you have to start with this. Right? Not this specific guitar, but the guitar itself has to sound good. Now, does that mean you need a Gibson J45 in order to get a good acoustic guitar recording? Of course not. But it does mean that if you have a really bad sounding acoustic guitar that's maybe made out of plastic and sounds like it's made out of plastic, don't have the expectation that you can set up a mic in a magical way and suddenly it sounds like uh, a John Mayer acoustic record. It's just, it's n not going to. Now, can you take a less than perfect sounding guitar and get an amazing performance and recording out of it? Sure, but you have to set and manage your expectations accordingly. If the guitar, for example, is out of tune, then no amount of recording and mixing tricks are gonna help that. I know that sounds super obvious, but I still get recordings from people they want me to critique the mix. How does this whole song sound? And the first thing I hear is the first chord rings out and it's out of tune. And I can't hear anything else for the rest of the song because that guitar is out of tune. Tuning guitars is a pain, but it, it's worth the extra couple of minutes to get it really in tune than to have to live with the out of tune guitar for the rest of the history of that recording. Now, as far as tuners go, if you're not an acoustic guitar player and you plan to ever record an acoustic guitar in your studio, spend a couple of bucks on one of these. This is the Snark clip-on tuner. There are probably a bajillion different tuners you can use. It clips onto the headstock, it senses the vibration through the guitar, and you can tune that way. That way, if they bring a guitar that doesn't have a pickup in it, or if they're playing bass, or they forgot their tuner, or whatever, this sucker can clip on and you can tune pretty much anything. So it's a good investment to always have on hand in your studio because we guitar players can be forgetful, okay? So it's nice if you have a tuner there in case we forget. So that's the first thing. In order to get a good recording of an acoustic guitar, you need to have a good sound coming out of the acoustic guitar, which means a decent sounding instrument that sounds pretty good in a room and is being performed well. Okay, now let's talk about microphone placement. A lot of people think there's a ton of mystery around recording acoustic guitar. Should I use one mic or two? Where do I place the microphone? Do I put it over my shoulder? Do I put it down on the carpet facing up? There, there's lots of different ways I guess you can do it, but I found through the recordings I do here in my home studio and sessions I do elsewhere at other studios, there's a pretty general, simple rule of thumb that you can follow and as a good starting point, it won't always work the first time you try it, but it's the starting point from which you can adjust to get the sound that you need. Every guitar sounds different. My two main acoustic guitars are this Gibson and this Taylor. The Taylor is a lot brighter sounding. It sounds amazing recorded, but I've gotta put the microphone in a different place than when I record this Gibson, which is a darker, bluesier sounding guitar that kind of doesn't have the brightness that that one has. It's nice to have both depending on the situation, but you have to record them differently. The way I like to approach recording acoustic guitar is to honestly keep the microphone in place and then move yourself relative to the mic. So a couple things you should know about microphones if you don't know them already. A directional microphone, which is what most of us are using, a microphone that picks up from one direction, will exhibit some characteristics that will change the tone depending on where you position yourself. The biggest example of that is as I get closer to the microphone, there's gonna be more bass in the recording. So you can use your position as an EQ. You know how you're driving down the road and your car may have a treble? Remember back when the cars had the little boost for the bass and the treble, these little sliders, and you could boost the bass and boost the treble? One way to boost the bass in your recording is to just get a little closer to the mic. 
the if you go too far, that ends up being boomy, so you don't want to do that. The flip side, though, is if you're way back here and the mic is two or three feet away, that may be the perfect sound, but it also might sound a little thin, a little wimpy, and you're wanting something with a little bit more fullness. Just get a little bit closer. When I do sessions at a recording studio where I do a lot of tracking days, I'm in a booth with a single microphone and it's on a big heavy stand. It's all set up by the engineer. I'm just the guy playing guitar. So what I do is I move my chair and I adjust myself to the microphone to get the sound that I want. So I'm listening through my headphones and I'm moving until I get to that spot that feels good. And that spot may change depending on the song. If it's a finger style song, I might get closer to the guitar because I'm putting out less volume and I want it to come through and be heard. If it's a really loud song where I'm wailing away on the pick, I might back up a little bit because maybe a brighter sound makes more sense for that particular song. There's so much the artist, the musician, the performer can do to affect the sound that you probably want to have a conversation with the guitar player if you are not him or her about how moving around really does change the sound. So they can explore and find a spot that sounds good and you can work together to get to that good spot. So for me, the starting point is to take the microphone and the microphone we're using today is a Roswell Pro Audio Mini K47. Great microphone. As of this video, I think it's under $300, like $299. Great sounding microphone, definitely a great home studio choice. Go check it out, there's links below. But we're using the Roswell Pro Audio Mini K47, which is just a large diaphragm condenser, okay? I say just because large diaphragm condensers are pretty typical in the home recording world. It's probably the, the type of microphone I use the most on acoustic guitars, with an exception that we'll talk about in a future video. But if I have to have one microphone, this is what I want. A large diaphragm condenser placed right in front of me, um, about a foot away, pointing somewhere in this general vicinity. So on a guitar, you've got the sound hole, which is where a lot of the low frequencies emanate. You've got the strings, you've got the fretboard, and you've got the bridge down here. Typically, right around here is a really sweet spot for recording. If you can have the microphone pointing here, you get a pretty balanced sound. You're getting a little bit of low end coming out of the sound hole. You're getting a good chunk of just the resonance of the body and the top of the guitar, but you're also getting some of the brightness that comes from the fingers moving, the pick strumming down here. It just tends to balance it out if you're pointed somewhere around here. That The double dots right there tend to mark the 12th fret. Somewhere just above that or really where the body of the guitar meets the neck. Imagine that's your aiming point, your starting point. Again, this is a starting point. You may put the mic exactly pointed right there at that dot and it might not sound good, so then you have to adjust. But it's a great place to start. So maybe from about a foot or so away, have the microphone pointing directly, kind of perpendicular to the to the neck of the guitar, pointing right there at, what is that, about the 15th fret. And then just listen. So I'm gonna put my headphones on and we're gonna see what this sounds like with just the normal setup of the microphone pointing at the 15th fret or so from about, about that far away. So it's maybe a little less than a foot, what is that, about maybe eight inches or so, nine inches? And let's see what that sounds like. So that, that feels pretty good to me. It, it's full, it's got a lot of low end, maybe a little too much low end, um, but it does feel, it's got some top end, it, fe it sounds like this guitar. Feels pretty good. Now, if I was doing a session right now, I would do, what I would do is probably scooch over a little bit. So I've discovered with this guitar, when it's really bright and a boomy kind of sounding guitar, if I want it to have less boom, I can back away. I'm already a decent distance away. I mean, I'm a good, nine inches away, if I get too much farther away, it starts to just be, it loses that intimacy that I typically want in an acoustic re recording. Here's what that sounds like with me about, I mean, I'm probably a foot and a half away now. It's a little more balanced sound, but it also is a little wimpier sound. It's, it's too far away. 
depending on the song, that might be perfect for the mix. But if you're wanting just, just an acoustic guitar that sounds as good as possible, I tend to want to be a little bit closer to get some of that fullness. So if up here about nine inches away, right at the 15th fret was a little full, one, there's a couple options you can do. We tried backing away, yeah, it wasn't quite right. I want to keep the distance there because I like the way the sound of the, the sound of the pick is hitting the mic. That feels pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate like this. So I've turned myself, again, we're not moving the microphone at all. I've turned myself in relation to the mic. It's still pointing in the same direction, but now it's a little farther away. It's closer to this part of the guitar, and it's farther away from the sound hole. So the boominess that I was feeling I had a little bit too much of before isn't quite there, and I'm getting a little more of the brightness without having to move the mic way over here on the way down the neck where you don't get any body. So instead of the mic facing you, if you're the microphone, Instead of having it facing you like this, I've angled it like this. So I'm, got, I'm a little farther away from the sound hole, slightly closer to the neck, and that tends to sound pretty good to me. So let's try that, see if it works. So that feels good to me. It has enough low end to be full. So if I'm doing just an acoustic song that's just an acoustic guitar and a vocal, it's got plenty of balance but plenty of low end to really feel like I'm getting my money's worth out of the, the guitar. But it also is still pretty balanced. It doesn't have excessive top end or excessive low end. It feels like it's right there in the sweet spot. Now, personal preference comes into play here. You may not like the amount of low end I've got there. You may not like the sound of this guitar at all. Why it's nice to have another guitar with a completely different sound to it available because no amount of mic placement is going to make this guitar sound like a Taylor and vice versa. So we know that we can move things around but there's only so much we can do with mic placement before we need to make another change. Does that make sense? If I could give you one piece of homework that would dramatically change your the, the quality of your acoustic guitar recordings and would improve the confidence you have moving into a recording session with acoustic guitar, it's to do this, this setup right here. Put the microphone right here in front of you and then just move and hit record and just move everywhere. So move over here, move over here, move right in the middle and, and hear what the microphone sounds like in all those different positions. That's the only way you're going to learn specifically what works for your guitar and your playing style in your room. So again, this is a starting point. Start here right in front, point it at the 15th fret from about seven to nine inches away and then twist and shout, <laughs> then turn and move, move forward, move backward, go around the microphone. You may find that something like this, where you're way turned this way for the particular day and the recording you're doing works perfectly. You gotta experiment with it a lot. But if you keep those things in mind, you're not just randomly moving. Every move has a purpose. It's, it's like a science experiment. I know that's nerdy, but you're just attempting things and then evaluating the results and then modifying your approach based on those results. And you just do that over and over until you've got a sound that you're pretty happy with. Okay, that's it. Three things. One, if you have a question, leave a comment below. I'll be sure to answer it. Two, if you want to hear more of my acoustic guitar recordings, go check out an EP I released called Rain. Rain. It's available for free wherever you like to stream music. It's an all acoustic EP, uh, all acoustic guitars done here in my studio. Thing number three, if you're into recording tips like this and you wanna dive in deeper, I've put together a cheat sheet for you. You can get that at recordingcheatsheet.com, absolutely free, go check it out. Let me see if I can lay down something that sounds halfway decent. Here we go.